Presentations are often not the first time information has been gathered. Usually, someone, at some time, and even teams or entire departments of people have been collecting the data related to the topic. This is certainly true of numeric data. It comes from sales figures, call logs, budgets, marketing projections, as well as any reporting mechanisms many organizations have in place. While we don't mind entering data, we probably don't look forward to re-entering it if we don't have to. In addition, any time that we recreate data, the possibility exists that we can enter it incorrectly. There's also the additional concern if we are responsible for making the presentation, but maybe not have direct knowledge or familiarity with the data itself, that we could not recognize what looks right and what doesn't look right. For all these reasons, we want to use data from an existing spreadsheet anytime we can for our PowerPoint charts. Before we get into the mechanics of getting Excel data into PowerPoint, a few spreadsheet tips are worth a minute of our time. One of the missteps that people make with just about everything in PowerPoint is including too much information, and charts are no exception. Before we import data, we should take a few minutes to clean up the data that we have, possibly even breaking it down into smaller sets or summarizing the data so that our audience doesn't need to see what they really don't need the details of. We have some data already in a worksheet. I already have it open, so I'm going to switch to it very quickly. You can find it in your Chapter 10 Working Files folder. It's called Niagara Revenues, and it, of course, is an Excel worksheet. We want to show revenues from tourism in the Niagara Falls area for the last three years. So when we look at the data, we actually have the last three years entered. We also have information for some years prior to that. So we have a total of six years data. But remember, the focus for this presentation is really just the last three years. So what do we do with the rest of the information? Well, we could just get rid of it. But part of our presentation is also showing, over time, what the revenues are. So instead of just getting rid of it, we've created an average column. This simply averages the values from 2008, 2009, and 2010 and puts them all into a single column instead of three. That's going to simplify our data and let us focus on the data that's important while still being able to refer to the prior year's data. That means that in order to use this in our presentation, we can simply get rid of these other three columns. So we'll just select them, right click, and choose delete. Now we're ready to use this data in our PowerPoint chart. So we're going to switch back to our presentation, make sure that we are on the appropriate slide, and then we're going to insert a chart. We can do that in any variety of ways. We're going to go ahead and change the layout to make it just a title only slide. And then we'll go ahead and choose insert and select chart from the illustrations group. We'll double click on a clustered column chart and wait for the little data sheet to show up, which it does at the bottom of the screen. I'm just gonna move this up so we can see it a little bit easier. Now we need to get the Excel data into PowerPoint. Believe it or not, with all of the automation and integration of our software, we do this by copying and pasting it. So let's go ahead and bounce back to our original worksheet, select our data, and I'm going to use Control C to make a copy. You can copy it any way that works for you. Then we'll switch back to PowerPoint, click in cell A1 of our data sheet, and I'm going to press Control V as in Victor to paste. What we've done is just fine, especially if we want to capture this data at this moment in time. But if we know that somebody may be editing that Excel spreadsheet, and we always want to make sure that our chart in PowerPoint is as up to date as Excel is, then we want to do something a little bit different. Anytime we paste in later versions of Office, we get a little tag that allows us to do different things when we paste. One of them is to just paste, and the other is to do a paste link. We actually want to choose the middle option, which is a paste link. Remember the difference is simply, are we pasting the information that will then be completely separate from the original Excel spreadsheet, or do we want to keep a link in place so that if somebody updates Excel, the next time we open this presentation, we'll be prompted to update our chart as well. It doesn't matter if it's simple data like we have here or more complex data. Once we get it copied and then paste it into PowerPoint, once it's pasted in, either as a direct paste or a link, we can manipulate the chart itself in the same way we would if we had typed the data into the embedded chart. I think it's fairly easy to see why we want to reuse data if it already exists instead of retyping it. This is even more important if the data is coming from other sources that may or may not want to work with it in our specific presentation. We also benefit by allowing the source data in Excel to be updated and having our chart update as quickly and easily as opening the file and saying yes, 
without having to re-enter anything by linking the data instead of hard coding it. All of these ways of using existing Excel data just makes creating charts for presentations easier and ensures the data is more accurate.